Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. You're looking at a 1939 Cockshut 90 and a 1940 Cockshut 99, both owned by Dr. Curtis Clark of Cambridge, Iowa. The 90 and 99 have basically the same body with a couple of differences under the hood. The two tractors basically are the same except the engine. The engine in the 90 uh, is an all fuel engine. The engine in the 99, the change was a high compression head gas only so it produced more horsepower. Based in Ontario, Canada, Cockshut first made a name for itself with its plows. Years later, it was their tractors that farmers appreciated. With the red and yellow paint scheme and the big fenders, these tractors were stylish for their day and plenty powerful too. The 90 is rated about 49 horsepower, while the 99 draws about 62 horsepower both fairly strong pullers for the early 1940s. You may have noticed that both tractors also feature a hand crank. But don't worry, you don't have to work up a sweat to get them started. At the time they were built, the hand cranks were uh, standard, but they came with an electric start option. So uh, if you selected the electric start option, the hand crank, they did not remove it, they just left it there as a redundant which it could still be used if the battery was gone. A couple uh, things that are unique about this tractor are the right foot clutch, which is over here, and the handbrake on the left, and the gear shift in the middle, and the throttle over here. It takes some use, getting used to, uh, particularly with the right foot clutch, because you're not used to it. You're looking for the clutch on the other side, uh, or a hand clutch. So, yeah, that gets exciting when you first start using it because you, you forget sometimes. <laughs> These are just two of the 20 tractors in Curtis's collection. He's been collecting cock shuts for years. He says both needed lots of help to get them looking as good as they do today. I advertise for the 90 in the cock shut quarterly, and a gentleman from Pennsylvania called me and had one. It was located up in uh, northwestern Minnesota. And I went up there and, and uh, drug it home. It was pretty bad shape, although uh, I've had worse. But it, had, it needed uh, a lot of tin work, and, and mechanically it wasn't too bad. The 99 I saw advertised in Antique Power and bought it from a gentleman in Saskatchewan. It was green when I bought it. I'm not sure whether that's, uh, that was Oliver Green or a primer green. I think it was Oliver green, probably, from the looks of it. At that time, these are Oliver built in Charles City, Iowa, and sent to Canada. And they would paint them. They came out of Charles City, Oliver green. They would paint them red in Canada and sell them. But if they were in a particular hurry to sell one, they, they would sell them green without painting them. But it's red now. Red and looking as good, or maybe even better, than the day they came from the factory. Though Curtis enjoys his tractors, he wasn't born and raised on a farm. He spent his career as a urologist. However, you can't be too far from a farm in Iowa, and Curtis was smitten with the Cockshut brand at an early age. I was a, a, a town kid. My dad was a school teacher. Uh, but I worked on a farm during the summer when I was in high school and in, enjoyed the, the outside work with tractors. I happened to see a cock shut. A good friend of mine had one, and I just liked the looks of them. My favorite part of the hobby is, is uh, getting a tractor, getting it restored, preserving some history, and yes, showing it off, but mainly just getting a piece of history restored and, and uh, saved. I enjoy all kinds and colors, all makes. I, I really, I collect cock shots, but I enjoy them all. If, if that's not classic tractor fever, I don't know what is.